So we hear a lot about finding our purpose and the importance of that, you know, how it gives us meaning, it gives our life, you know, inspiration and motivation to accomplish things and to become something great, you know, or to become something more than we are, or to leave our mark on this world in a positive way. We're always told and reinforced that this is important, right? That we need to find some meaning and some purpose to life. And as I think about this now, I don't know, what if that's not true? Have we ever stopped to question that maybe life doesn't have any purpose or meaning, let's say, necessarily? That that's sort of superimposed on top of it. You know, whatever meaning we derive, it's, uh, it's our own mental creation, right? I mean, it doesn't exist existentially, as it were, like as a part of the thing. It's our own interpretation of it. It's our own values and judgments of what it means. What is its meaning? What is its purpose? What is my purpose, right? How do I find my purpose? Well, I don't know. What if there isn't a purpose to find? Have you ever stopped to ask yourself that question? Sort of disorienting, right? Probably people don't want to move towards that sort of questioning because it leaves you sort of in a, in a limbo state, right? Well, what am I? What the hell am I doing here if I don't have a purpose? Maybe, maybe the purpose is simply to live, to experience. Maybe that is the purpose for God to experience this life through you, through your individual person, apparent person, sleeping, giant. Maybe that's the purpose. Well, if that is the purpose, and that's what's happening, you know, if you look at things from a non-dual sort of perspective, in that everything is one, this is one energy, one creation, one, one being, if you will, all appearing, one appearance, right? One appearance appearing within one vastly infinite consciousness that subsumes all other individualities, right? It is the, uh, the underlying factor or the unifying principle, if you were. So, if we take that to be the reality, just as an experiment, sort of try it on like a hat, then it's sort of not difficult to imagine God as this infinite being, right? Uh, playing all the roles simultaneously, but that we as the character are largely asleep to. And so let's just assume for a moment, just to, just to try this out for an experiment, a little mental experiment, that our purpose is that God is living through us and experiencing this life as limited individuals, separate from the whole, uh, you know, not eternal, right? But finite, limited, born, created, and will die. Have relationship with other beings that are separate from it. And that's the whole purpose, is to just have this experience of separation and difference and individuality. Ah, and we've done that. We've been doing that. I mean, I've been doing that for a while. Seems like eons. Seems like eons that I've been doing that. Now it's like I'm waking up to the oneness. Uh, that awareness, that unitive awareness, right? That infinite consciousness is sort of waking up within me within this body. I know it's happening to a lot of you all out there as well. All you apparent others watching this or not watching this. There are many, it would seem, who are sort of waking up in various degrees to um,
to their consciousness, recognizing it in a way that they hadn't noticed it before, took it for granted, right? And so for those of us who are awakening to that reality of our godhood, of our divinity, of our rea the reality of our nature as incarnations of God, as it were, in these forms, but consciousness is not incarnated. Our essence, right, didn't incarnate. Our essence is what we are, what we always are, what we still are. We're sort of infinitesimal uh, um, holograms of that infinite consciousness. Infinitesimally small, <laughs> right? But holograms, nonetheless, contain the, uh, the whole. They're just miniature iterations. They still contain all the components of the whole, just like we contain all of the universe within us. Spiritual awakening and uh, um, recognizing, recognition, right, of our godhood involves expansion of our consciousness to include everything and everyone. Ultimately, uh, nothing is separate. And so we must see that and live as it in order for it to really be the truth for us. Otherwise, it's just theory. A lot of people get trapped here. Just uh, They have this nice concept about what it means to be one and oneness and unity consciousness and all that. But, you know, they, um, they don't express that necessarily in their thoughts and uh, in their actions. So, but it's a process, right? So this is a process that's unfolding. And the person we formerly took ourselves to be is not doing it. And that's a crazy thing to wake up to, is that you're, on, you're not doing anything. And you don't have to do anything. There's really nothing to do. Now, if I'm speaking of the ego, no, the ego has lots of things to do. You know, there's all sorts of things that the ego can do to busy itself so that it doesn't create more problems for itself. And that's where spiritual practice comes into play and things like that. But ultimately, what wakes up is not you. And it is you, but it's not the you that you think of yourself as. And when that wakes up, it starts to develop its own momentum is what seems to happen. And again, so it's an unfolding, not something that you need to do necessarily, but something you recognize, pay attention to. And the more you recognize it and see it, the greater that awareness becomes. And again, it's an expansion, expanding in greater and greater fullness and connectivity and oneness until simultaneously the me is dissolving. Om, I am, Om, I am, I am. So that me is, uh, is gone, and what's left is the totality, right? And awareness is still there, here. Awareness is always present. It's the fire of our experience. You cannot have experience without it. You cannot have anything without it. <laughs> so... You don't lose anything that's real. What's lost is the uh, false former self we took ourselves to be. And so, if we could say that once, you know, one has awakened, right? Um, I, I think that the purpose of your life takes on a new meaning uh, and a new trajectory. Before, you know, it was a lot of doing, a lot of... Um, manifesting, a lot of goals, right? A lot of working hard to become a better person. And that's sort of the reverse starts to happen. Once a certain, uh, uh, I hate to use these words because they're very dualistic, just to think in this hierarchical way, but it's kind of the only way that we can delineate things. So just bear with me. It's a uh, paradoxical whenever we're using language to describe these things. 
<sighs> but nonetheless, when that awakening has taken on a certain amount of intensity, right? Then what start to become more clear, what starts to become more clear is that it is no longer me doing it. There's no longer I am I am now working to become more spiritual or I need to become enlightened. No, 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 no. <sighs> I am, I am, I am. So that which is already enlightened, it remains enlightened. It never was not enlightened. And the one trying to reach that enlightenment never gets there. That one must go in order for enlightenment to become uh, awakened to or to become your experience, let's say. But it's not the ego's experience. It's not the experience of the individual. It's the experience of reality, of life, without an ego. That's all. It's just the experience of it without the ego sense. So that dissolves. And then the purpose, right, is more and more and deeper embodiment of that reality and experience of it. But it's not something that you have to do. So this is a very strange situation to find oneself in. But it's also very freeing. And as you may go through a certain degree of difficulty getting there, once you've gone through that difficulty, it becomes very... Uh, wonderful and awesome and amazing. And then even sometimes difficulty comes back in and it's painful. <laughs> ah. But take heart and just know that that's temporary and that's passing. It's just part of this refinement process. Nothing has wrong, nothing has gone wrong, okay? Difficulties don't just automatically disappear from the picture. It's just that you don't take it personally. You begin to take it less and less personally. And you start to see the humor of it more and more. And you begin to find joy and bliss naturally arising all the time, just spontaneously. And so those encourage you, right? Encourage you to trust more. When we trust more, the releasing naturally happens more and more on its own. Vulnerability naturally happens. Connection naturally happens more and more on its own. Empowerment happens more and more on its own naturally. We don't have to work to become empowered. The power of God is within you now. You don't have to work for that. I can promise you that. Matter of fact, you can't stop it. That's the one thing. We're working so hard to do it, and that actually prevents it from doing its greatest capacity in your life. So, I can recommend one thing for sure is allow that power to work through you more so than you trying to do it. Because if you can get that down, that's a big, big part of it. If you can start to release control and allow the power to work through you and in your life. You get to experience that power, that greatness, the power of God's will. Home. You get to experience that power operating through you and doing amazing things without your effort, without any stress. And just witness the awesomeness. So that's what's available the more and more you release. And so that's why I think that this is, you know, in fact, if, if we're going to have a purpose, if we're gonna define a purpose for our lives, it's really up to us, right? It's up to you, apparently. Now, I don't know what's coming through spontaneously, uh, but right now, as an, as an individual, as an individual, you experience this 
questioning, right? This, this wanting to know, what, what am I doing? Where am I going? What's my purpose? Most of us experience that on some level. So if we're going to define a purpose for ourselves, if you're going to try to answer that question for yourself, then I recommend to really dwell on these things deeply. And as, you know, one who is, you know, awakened to some degree of the reality of your spiritual essence. And if you're watching this video, you probably are. Or you probably wouldn't be interested in it or just, you're just trying to, uh, I don't know, be entertained. But no, for the most part, you're, you're interested in some reason in figuring out what is my purpose? Why am I here? So consider that. If there's oneness, if it is, like Einstein said, energy and matter can be equated, in which case everything in this entire universe is energy, right? And energy is just energy. It's not separate. I mean, it's, it manifests into all sorts of different things, right? Heat, power, you know, electricity, uh -huh. Muscles, moving things, energy, right? But it's just energy taking different forms. So if it's all one, and if it's all one, and what we call that one energy, and it's in, in its vast capacity to create infinite variety, consciously, if we call that God, and we take that to be the everything that is, and it's manifested into all these things, including you. It's manifested into you. For what purpose, right? The thing is, God wants to be you. Right now, more than anything in your experience, most of us can't even imagine that right now. We would think, why would God want to be me? But no, God actually is you. And he wants to have the experience of your life more than anything in your life right now. So consider that. And then consider more and more, if that's the case, waking up to that and realizing it and living it and having that direct, not even connection with God, right? This is yoga. It's not connection. It's union. Union. Perhaps that's the greatest purpose. And the key takeaway from that is that it's not up to you to do it. You can't do it. It's like the flower opening in the springtime, right? You can't force it to happen, but it is up to you to create the conditions for it to happen, right? If, um, if it's our garden and we don't take care of it, we can't expect for it to produce much. And yet, and yet, nature often produces flowers on its own with no effort. So that's something also to consider. But if you have the capacity, take time to create some space for awareness to grow in your life. If you do that, it will certainly do the rest. So, take heart on this journey. Many blessings to you. Much love. Namaste. See you soon.